Manitoba has a new premier, NDP leader Wab Kanu. His historic win has made headlines as the first First Nations provincial premier in Canada. I didn't run on being the first uh, First Nations premier. I put my name on the ballot to try and be the best premier uh, because that's what you, the people of this province, deserve. New rallied voters by focusing on health care and affordability. And unlike the Conservatives, he committed to searching a Winnipeg area landfill that police believe holds the remains of two First Nations women. It will be important for us to uh, deliver on this. And again, it's important for us to try. Joining me now to talk about the political climate that Wab Kanu will be navigating, as well as for a reality check on how the government is doing when it comes to reconciliation, is former Liberal Cabinet Minister and Attorney General Jody Wilson-Raybould. She's also the author of True Reconciliation, How to Be a Force for Change. Nice to see you and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Nice to, nice to see you. Always great to chat. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, I... I thought immediately of you, and I wondered what was going through your mind when Wab Kanu was elected as the first First Nations Premier uh, of a province, and, and in Manitoba. It is obviously a historic landmark, but you've written about the challenges that you experienced as an Indigenous woman, as a cabinet minister in politics. Um, getting elected is huge. It's hugely significant, but it's not necessarily where the challenges stop. Do you see this as a, a potential moment for change in Canada? Well, I think it's uh, momentous to see an Indigenous person as the first First Nations Premier. I mean, certainly uh, he comes from a very different worldview, being Indigenous, being raised within the customs and traditions of his people. And I think that is a positive thing, bringing different worldviews into to government, um, collective communitarian worldviews where every voice matters and every individual in a community has a role to play. I mean, not to generalize Indigenous teachings, but these are some of the teachings of Indigenous peoples across the country. And um, I know that he is strongly rooted in his culture. And um, from what I've heard uh, of him in terms of his leadership and the campaign, that he is going to be very strongly rooted in representing all of Manitobans. And and um, in doing that, um, I wish him all of the best of luck for the, the challenges that he will most definitely face in the future. One of the things that he campaigned on, which resonated with a lot of Manitobans, was a pledge to search the Winnipeg area landfill that it is believed the remains of two murdered Indigenous women uh, are, are in. What do you think should happen in terms of the landfill and the search? And do you believe as a former federal government politician that the federal government should be backing this more strongly or, or providing more funding? Well, I, I said um, publicly some time ago when, when this was becoming publicly known, I think absolutely the landfill uh, needs to be searched for the remains of those two people. And I'm pleased that um, the Premier-designate has um, renewed his commitment to doing so. Um, just imagine um, if they were your loved ones, <laughs> remains in the landfill. Um, and yes, I think that the federal government, I mean, they have put forward some money, but I think that uh, um, they should um, support the efforts of the new government in following through with their commitment to search the landfill for the remains of the two women. It's Thanksgiving, which is a, a mixed time when you're remembering Canada's history as we move forward with reconciliation and, and realize this is not just a time that is all about turkey and mashed potatoes and families. It's also a time about colonization, about what happened to Indigenous Canadians in our history um, and the incredible gift that they gave to Canadians who had come here from Europe in teaching them how to survive in many cases. And as I was thinking about this and I was reading your book, True Reconciliation, where you're talking about this path that has to be walked and how it is a path that needs to not just be performative, in talking about it, wearing orange shirts, that's all important in changing the dialogue and the environment, but that it needs to be action-oriented too. And I want to loop around with you today to ask how you feel the efforts are going both on Canadians' behalf and on Ottawa's behalf when it comes to reconciliation with Indigenous Canadians. 
Well, I I think that um, first and foremost, we have to recognize that there has been some constructive change uh, in terms of the well-being of Indigenous peoples in this country. And, and I will say that that constructive change has been mostly as a result of the advocacy and action of Indigenous peoples themselves. Um, having said that, we have a long way to go in terms of true reconciliation in this country. And I have been challenged certainly when I was in this government and now um, with the efforts that um, the federal government has made with respect to reconciliation. Um, often, and in this case, the federal government certainly has focused more on the performative as opposed to true reconciliation. I mean, this government made commitments to transformative change, transformative shifts in laws, policies and practices of the government that have been um, there was that have resulted in the colonialism that we still continue to face today. We need um, to have a follow through with the commitment that the prime minister has made publicly in the House of Commons to change the laws, policies and practices of the Canadian government to do the hard work, the necessary work that will meet the litmus test, my litmus test, which is actual substantive change on the ground in Indigenous communities and improved well-being. That hasn't happened in any measurable way to this point. Well, and there's, there's so many areas. I mean, I think of Indigenous kids who are still sent away to go to school because there are not schools in their community, which means you have to make a choice between education or being with your family. Uh, when we talk about the landfill, missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls, uh, where we have talked about a strategy, but not a lot has been produced out of that. Uh, you, you have the commitments from Truth and Reconciliation, many of which are unfulfilled. There have been a number of uh, boil water advisories lifted, but there is still a number of places that, that don't have safe water. It, it kind of goes on and on and on. What do you think the holdup is on why the action is not being taken more? In your book, you talk about the fact that there's been study after study. It's not that people don't know what the problem is or what the potential solution is. The action just isn't following through. Why is that? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. And it's one that we really need to think about an answer why. Uh, I mean, there's a number of different answers for that um, and excuses that are given and offered by governments, in particular the, the federal government. It's, it's too hard. Um, resolving Indigenous issues um, extends the efforts, extend beyond the life of any one government. I mean, the excuse of being too hard or not knowing what to do or not understanding the issues need to be, those excuses need to be set aside. What needs to happen, and you referenced all the reports and commissions that we've had over the years, and Indigenous peoples know these solutions and have been advocating for them for decades. What needs to happen is the federal government needs to recognize the rights of Indigenous peoples and create the space for the implementation of those rights, honoring treaties, ensuring that Indigenous peoples can be self-determining, including self-governing. This is a commitment that was made on February the 14th of 2018 by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau in the House of Commons. These commitments need to be followed through. This is the transformative change, the recognition of rights that needs to happen to create the space for proper nation-to-nation -nation relationships with our governments and the implementation of Indigenous laws and traditions in parallel with, um, with other governments. This is where the transformative change will happen, and this is what is, in my view, true reconciliation, not the, the easy and the symbolic realities that seem to be the focus of a lot of governments. Jody Wilson-Raybould, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me.